Today we're talking about children's bone health. If you have a question, you can send it to the doctors at WLBT.net. Joining us is Dr. Craig Robbins. He's a pediatric orthopedic surgeon at Baptist. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. How important is bone health in children? Uh, the interesting thing is that most people don't realize how important bone health is to children. There's some statistics, although they're a couple years old, that over 50% of kids are not meeting their normal calcium intake, and that number gets higher as girls reach adolescence. Up to 70 to 80% of girls are not getting the calcium they need. Okay, so how much calcium does a child need? Because I had always heard that if you're not getting enough to actually eat Tums. And I'm like, that just does not sound right. good. So the best way to get calcium, as, as with most the best way to get minerals is through a good healthy diet. So the recommendations are kind of posted all over the internet, but, a, but an easy recommendation is about 1,200 milligrams of calcium for an adolescent, 10 or 11 year old. That would be about five glasses of milk or five servings of milk in a day. And then wow. who's going to pay for the diet that's going to go on? <laughs> I mean, really? Yes. I mean, that's five or 600 calories. That, right. Right. Easy. So uh, a lot of the questions I get from some of the young women and young girls in my practice are about the calories or about the fat intake. So we talk about things like the low-fat alternatives, but a Tums or some sort of uh, dietary supplement is certainly a great way to consider getting the extra calcium. There's some tricks you can do, sprinkle low-fat cheeses, uh, consider non-dairy sources of calcium, broccoli, mm -hmm. uh, Chinese cabbage, um, other fruits and vegetables that are calcium rich and calcium fortified things like, like juices and calcium fortified breads. So there are ways to get it that don't have to come with that high calorie load if you're worried about calories. I need to get creative. I've got one who likes nothing dairy. I mean, if it, it's not cheese on a pizza, nothing dairy. It doesn't count. So, mm -hmm. so something like that, or some people talk about lactose intolerance, especially high prevalence mm -hmm. in African Americans, um, that supplementation certainly is, is a great thing to consider. The interesting thing about lactose intolerance is that most people who are lactose intolerant are, di are calcium deficient, not because of the lactose, but because they avoid dairy. If they took small amounts of dairy several times per day, they might not have problems. So their, di their calcium deficiency is actually because they're avoiding the symptoms uh, that they might not even get taking the smaller doses. I was one of those children that was raised on soy, mi right. soy milk because I was lactose uh, intolerant. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember at school, you know, when everybody would have to drink their chocolate milk, I would drink uh, some kind of juice, like uh, jungle juice or something uh, like that. Um, but I grew out of that. So it seemed right. like as I became a teenager, all of a sudden I could start drinking milk and... And you outgrew it. Yeah. And then there's those little, I, I don't have the problem, so I've never had to do it, but there are those little tablets you can take, uh, but there's non-dietary, non-dairy sources of calcium, the, the things we were talking about. Right. Fruits and vegetables. What happens to a child from maybe birth to, you know, in, in those grow, grow quickly years? when they don't get the uh, calcium that they need. So in the early or part vitamin of, D, I mean, what's the Right, difference? vitamin D, that's yeah. a great question. So in the early part of the century, there was something much more common called rickets. Rickets mm -hmm. was softening of the bones. And in the 1930s, the government started fortifying milk with vitamin D and then wheats and grains. So rickets is not very common, but I still see it in my practice. I, I'm looking at a kid really? right now who's 10 years old who has rickets and will probably need surgery. The point is that through a vitamin D deficiency and possibly even a calcium deficiency, the bones don't get hard. So even though you have the calcium and you have the products to make bone, you don't have everything you need to make the bone turn hard. So over time, the bones get soft, and that would be rickets. Now, once you've finished growing and your bones are mature and you've reached adult age, the bones then harden in that place and they always stay like that. The nice thing about rickets is that it is diagnosable and it is treatable. And in a lot of breastfed infants, there's a um, breastfed rickets that the young kids can get. And certainly the pediatrician can talk to you about supplementation of your breastfed only baby with vitamin D supplements, but there's blood tests that can be done and it can absolutely be treated. And that's the first mainstay. If a child comes to me with crooked bones that seems like rickets, it's, they go to the endocrinologist to be treated before they come to see me about the bone issues. Is that usually in combination with another uh problem or is, you know, I mean, you just wouldn't think that a kid would have rickets today. Well, so the, the children who have it, and, and I'm not an endocrinologist, some of it is escaping no. me, but there are metabolic problems that can be diagnosed. So yes, if a child comes to see me with rickets, certainly I'm on the lookout and that's why I get my other colleagues involved. Okay. okay. Dr. Craig Robbins will talk a little bit more about children and their bone health. If you have questions, email us at the doctors at WLBT.net or you can go online, wlbt.com, and click on Medical Matters.
We have um, Dr. Craig Robbins here talking about pediatric bone health. Thank you for joining us today. We we're talking about what happens when your kids don't get enough calcium and whatnot. Let's talk about the sun. Okay. Um, is it good for the kids to be out in the sun and play? A certain amount of sun is great. And even if you're overprotective, even if you're putting sunblock, using shade and doing all those things, your kids are still getting enough sunlight to make that vitamin D we talked about earlier. So sun is good in small amounts, but where we live in the south, there's sun most of the year, so we can use good sun protective strategies such as sunblock, at least 15. Uh, the block set block UVA and UVB, uh, sun shade, staying out of the sun during peak hours, which is kind of hard now during summer, everybody's out of school, but limiting your exposure is certainly a good thing. Uh, my mother died of melanoma when I was 12, so really? skin cancer, so I kind of grew up in a household where the sun is not something to be worshipped, even though I grew right. up in Miami, but avoiding the sun, so long sleeve shirts, cotton, uh, things like that. When you are dressed like that, is it, do you still get absorbed D? You, like you, you can get the, the amount, you have to have exposed skin to, to make the vitamin D and you don't need a long time. I think it's maybe 15 or 20 minutes yeah. of good sun exposure to make the D. But, but nowadays if you're getting the calcium you need, usually the vitamin D is coming with it. So okay. the sun exposure isn't really going to be your primary means, but, but it can be. Well, um, having three little ones, I'm always interested in, in the whole calcium issue and uh, because it, osteoporosis seems to run and rampant in my family yes. and the older women. So one thing that my pediatrician told me, there is a certain point where you go from drinking what I'd call full leaded milk, okay, right. your vitamin D, to drinking, having your children drink either the skim or the reduced fat. Tell me about that. Do children need to be drinking vitamin D all through, you know, childhood and adolescence? Talk about that. So regardless of the fat content, the milks are all going to be fortified with vitamin D or, or most of them are going to be fortified. So if you're looking at a skim versus a 2% versus a full milk, the vitamin D content and the calcium content are the same. Okay. So the reasons to avoid the fat would be then for calories or, or reasons like that. But you, you raise an interesting point that at some some point in time the child stops being a growing kid and turns into an adult and the bones uh, behave accordingly. Mm -hmm. So bone will be built and bone mass will be accrued until about the late 20s. So you're just barely a few years past your prime. But as long as you're building your, your bone mass in youth and adolescence, uh, weight-bearing activities, lots of exercise, drinking good calcium, good vitamin D intake, you can maximize your bone intake and your bone density and then after 30, unfortunately, it starts to taper off. So yeah. now is the time 40. for the young kids. <laughs> it started at 25 for me. <laughs> well, now I'll say this. I did switch. I've switched my children to fat-free milk. I know without fail they are getting plenty of fat in their diet. Right. So I just went to fat-free milk. Yeah. Of course, you may regulate what your kids eat a little bit closer than I do. Well, uh, the, the baby is still <clears throat> drinking the, the vitamin D, but right. my older ones, the, the one that is three and five, we do the two percent. Mm -hmm. That's how um, we did it, So too. We're, we're backing off on the calories, but right. like you said, I'm glad to hear they're still getting the ca calcium Correct. and they're still getting the vitamin D. Correct. And then an, an issue I'm asked a lot is about sodas. What is the relationship between sodas? Is there something with soda actively taking bone away. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that answer has been con conclusively drawn, but the point is, instead of a glass of soda, have a glass of milk. Okay. Have a glass of calcium fortified juice. Have a glass of water. Nothing wrong with that. Even better. You right, need Dr. your Craig sweet Robin. tea, though. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. We'll be right back.